This is when you can actually leapfrog the competition. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. All right, all right, all right. So welcome to another episode of Insight with Irv. Today we have a special guest by the name of Ricky Carruth out of Alabama. He's a top producing agent. And I'm so excited to have him on this show. If you guys don't already know who he is, uh, be sure to check out his Instagram handle, which we will be dropping in the description down below. And without further ado, I'm just gonna let the man himself introduce himself. So Ricky, what's going on, brother? Oh man, not much. Just uh, <laughs> been working out of the house for the last month, just trying to make it happen, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I feel you, I feel you. How's this whole, uh, how's this whole thing really been shaking up for you? I mean, how's, how's your business been since how have you been adapting? Uh, it's been great, man. I mean, number one, it was highly predicted. You know, I mean, the market's been going up for so long. Something was going to bring it down. Um, it's crazy that everything shut down and stuff. So, you know, that, that's how market crashes happen. It's when it's things that you least expect. You know, I mean, if everybody saw it coming, then, you know, nobody would get scared and, you know, the market would never go down. Um, you know, something has to happen that really scares people. And the only way to scare people is to do something nobody saw coming. And so, yeah, so. And that's how, how, how has the market been performing in your area of Alabama? Well, I mean, it's been great. And then as soon as this happened, you know, it slowed down tremendously, you know. Um, I normally sell about 30 properties in March every year, and this year I sold two. Um, so I've sold. It's a big change. Yeah, yeah, big change. Um, but it, like I say, totally predicted. You know, um, I went through 2008, I went through that crash, I went through the oil spill. Um, you know, I, I saw it all happen then, you know, all the stuff that's happening now is the same, same old story, you know, nothing really different. So after you've been through it a couple times, you know, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, you know, the market will stop on a dime and uh, when, when, you know, when when people get scared, you know, like people that were in the buying process or thinking about selling and then something like this happens, they put the, put on the pause, like they hit the pause button. And that scares a lot of agents because they think that all the business they had going on has now disappeared, which it kind of has temporarily. But what you got to realize is that the market's in a transition and, you know, you're always going to suffer temporarily, only for a couple months. And then once the market, once the dust settles and the market kind of figures out where it's gonna go from that point, so something happens, scares everyone. You know, everybody puts the pause button on for about two or three months until they can get clarity on which way the market's gonna go. And then from that point, the market's either gonna keep going up or come down. You know, it's either gonna be one or the other. It could stay, could stay flat, you know, but it doesn't matter which way it's gonna go. We just need to know which way it's going. You know, we just need to know the direction. If it's going down, great. You know, I'm gonna go out there and line up investors and we're gonna buy, you know, all kinds of really good deals and uh, transactions are gonna continue to happen. If it's flat, that means that, you know, it's kind of a balanced market between buyers and sellers, which means there's a pretty good amount of demand and there's a pretty nice amount of inventory. So that's not a bad market to be in. And if prices go up, <laughs> that means that, you know, there's really low inventory and there's a lot of demand. So that's also a good market to be in. So it doesn't matter if you, if you catch my drift, it doesn't matter what kind of market we're in at the end of this, you know, we just got to get to that point where we know, you know, what, what it's going to do. And then from there, um, you can just absolutely crush it, you know? So I'm kind of enjoying this moment. It's given me a chance to kind of recharge and, you know, take a step back from my business and take a look at all the holes in my business and, you know, kind of tighten up a few things. And, uh, you know, it, it's been it's been a well needed adjustment period for me, you know, so and two, you know, this is the time right now when you really build your business. You know, in 2008, when the crash happened, that was when I I, I grabbed so much market share during that time in 2000. Going down, especially when it's going down, it's really the time to gather some more market share. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, this is the time when most agents are just chilling, and you know, yeah, and, and you know, it, 
this is when you can actually leapfrog the competition. This is this is when you can actually, you know, all the agents out there that have been just wishing and hoping that they could one day be the top agent in their market, this is the moment right here where it's really easy. You know, it's extremely easy to to get out there and, and gobble up that market share and and uh, you know come out of this thing on top. So, you know, the agents that are gonna be you know, above average and actually hit that top agent in their area mark, this is the this is their moment. You know, this is your moment. Do you think that more agents are the ones that aren't working maybe as hard as you would recommend aren't working as hard because of fear of what's going on or because of fear they just don't know what to do? Both. I mean, a lot of people know, almost everybody knows what to do, but I'm getting messages from people that are just scared to do it. You know, they don't want to reach out to people because they feel like it's it's insensitive to reach out to people during this time. And they don't realize that what you're doing is you're calling people to check on them. You know, to see how they're, yeah, to see how they're doing. See what we can do to help. You know, see what's going on. And they're always going to remember that you called them during the pandemic to check on them. They're going to remember that forever. They're going to remember that, you know. So right now is a crucial time. You got to lean into, you know, you got to lean into this moment. And, uh, and really get on the phone. I've been making calls eight hours a day. Really? So you're really, so you're really, really not actually practicing what you're preaching on your own channels? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you have to, you have to. I mean, like this is, you know, it's kind of like when the star market goes down, you really want to buy a bunch, you know? It's the same thing with this. The market is so cheap right now in terms of getting that attention and have when you call people right now they're talking to you for hours because they've been locked in their house for three weeks and they're just dying to talk to somebody you know and then you're full of fresh air with information and you're giving them i'm not sure if you're per se giving them a market update or if they're just past clients and just kind of just checking up on them i mean what has that conversation been sounding like for you oh, i've been doing both i've been making been calling past clients and i've been uh doing cold calling i did live calls on youtube uh, two weeks ago, um, you know, and it goes like this. It's like, hey, it's Ricky Cruz, how you doing? And you're like, good. I'm like, yeah, I've been working out of my house for three weeks. This stuff's crazy, isn't it? And then they just start talking forever about the situation going on, you know, and you just talk back and forth for a while. And then when you get to the end of that, it's like, well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but, you know, the market has slowed down a lot, but I'm still selling a couple properties. It's not totally dead, you know, and I just call to see if there's anything I could do for you. Right, so you're opening up, super conversational, providing a little bit of value on the back end, and obviously it goes back down, so you're not gonna force someone to make a sale, make a move. It just kinda leads into, if they're already thinking about that, they just have it to be at the right place, right time. Man, see, everybody's trying to figure out like, you know, what's the objective, or how do we get to the closing, and stuff like that, and the thing is, is just let it happen. The, the, the objective of, for me, with making calls is just to get a conversation going. If I can get them talking and I can get them feeling comfortable with me and we get a conversation going, then you never know where that's gonna lead. You know, you just never know. So many opportunities come out of it. You know, the more people you talk to, the more things you learn, the more, you know, things you find out about what people wanna do, what they're thinking, deals going on. There's so much to it. But if you're just sitting around not calling people, wondering why everybody else is selling property but you, you know, I mean, there you go.